In a quiet rural village in Beijing was a place where ancient folklore and reality blurred, particularly as Chinese New Year neared. Red lanterns dance in the winter breeze, their glow competing with the distant pops of firecrackers and the aroma of incense. Li, a young schoolteacher, had recently arrived. Her eyes filled with the wonder of the village's mysterious aura, so different from the bustling city she'd left. As the villagers prepared for the new year, Li began to sense an unspoken tension, a caution in their laughter and hushed conversations. Her neighbor, Old Chen, a man whose face bore the marks of time and wisdom, often watched her very closely. One morning, he offered her a cryptic message: "The shadow fears the light of a thousand truths. What is hidden in plain sight holds the key." But only the seeker who listens to silence will find it. Li pondered his words, their meaning deep. She smiled and waved goodbye. At the new school, everything went well for Li. The children, especially Wei, a bright and sweet boy, brought joy to her days with his small morning gifts: a hand-drawn picture, a ripe apple. However, as the new year drew closer. Li began to feel an overwhelming fatigue that clouded her mind and weakened her body. It was as if a heavy blanket had been thrown over her very spirit. The nights, however, were the worst. As soon as Li closed her eyes, she would find herself plunged into a realm of shadows and haunting dreams that left her tossing and turning. <laughs> Morning would bring no relief. Each day, Li awoke feeling more depleted than before. Her energy sapped, her vitality drained. Even Wei began to notice the change in his beloved teacher. His face was full of concern as he handed her the morning's gift. His usual bright chatter replaced by hesitant words and worried glances. The villagers watched her with a mix of worry and an unspoken recognition, as if they knew the cause of her affliction. The festive air of the New Year celebrations now seemed to mock her inner turmoil. The shadows in her dreams became more menacing, the whispers more insistent, hinting at an unseen force seeking to claim her. Amidst this growing unease, it was Old Chen who finally stepped forth. One evening, he beckoned Li to join him near the path that led into the dense forest. Old Chen shared the legend that had been whispered in hushed tones for centuries: the Jiangxi is a cursed entity born from improper burial and dark sorcery, clad in the robes of a Qing Dynasty official. It is trapped between life and death. He spoke of how the Jiangxi, driven by an insatiable hunger for qi, the vital life force, preyed upon the living under the cover of night. Old Chen continued. The Jiangxi was once a corrupt official, punished by celestial forces, condemned to roam eternally, bound to the shadows. Li listened, a chill coursing through her despite the mild evening air. The pieces of her own experience began to align with a terrifying clarity: the unexplainable fatigue, the nightmarish visions, the villagers' guarded glances. Many years ago, the Jiangxi brought calamity upon this village. It was sealed in the old temple deep in the forest, a place now shunned and feared. But some bonds, even those forged by ancient rites, can weaken with time. Feeling a profound sense of foreboding, Li returned home, too drained and paranoid to join the New Year celebrations. The lively sounds of the celebration—music, laughter, the crackle of fireworks—drifted through her window as she lay down. A restless sleep overtook her. Completely out of it, she began to sleepwalk, drawn towards the village square where the festivities were in full swing. Guided by an unseen force, she walked through the quiet streets, moving away from the safety of her home towards the heart of the festivities. The village square was alive with vibrant colors and lights. Lanterns swayed gently in the night breeze, casting a warm glow over the faces of the villagers as they celebrated. Dragon dancers weaved through the crowd, their movements both graceful and powerful. 
But amidst this scene of joy, villagers noticed Lee. Her eyes vacant, her steps slow and unsteady, as she moved through the crowd like a ghost. It was then, at the peak of the celebration, that a sudden eerie hush fell over the village square. The music faltered, the laughter died down, and the crowd parted in a mix of confusion and fear. From the shadows at the edge of the square, a figure emerged, the Jiangxi. It emerged from the shadows. Its skin was ghastly pale, almost translucent, stretched over its skeletal frame. Its eyes sunken and devoid of life, glowed with a malevolent red light that seemed to pierce the soul. It was clad in the rotting remnants of a Qing Dynasty official's robe. Its movements were grotesque and unnatural. Each step was accompanied by the sickening crack of stiff, unyielding joints, echoing eerily through the silent village square. As the villagers, led by Old Chen, ran over and formed a protective circle around Li, the Jiangxi fixated on them with a predatory gaze. It let out a guttural growl, a sound that seemed to come from the depths of the underworld, chilling the blood of all who heard it. Finally, Li woke up from her trance. With a sudden jerky motion, the Jiangxi lunged at the nearest villager, its movements swift and horrifying. The villager, paralyzed by fear, could only scream as the creature's cold, dead hands closed around his throat. The Jiangxi's touch was like ice, draining the life force from its victim in a matter of seconds. The villager's skin turned ashen, his eyes wide with terror before he slumped to the ground, lifeless. Amidst this tense standoff, a small figure pushed through the crowd. It was Wei clutching something tightly in his hand as he made his way towards Li. In his eyes was a mix of fear and courage. Reaching Li, Wei extended his hand, revealing a special talisman written in chicken's blood. Teacher Li, my grandmother said this has been in our family for generations. It's supposed to protect against evil spirits. Li, taken aback by Wei's bravery, took the gift. It was cool to the touch, and as her fingers closed around it, a strange sensation coursed through her. The Jiangxi turned its malevolent gaze upon them. It moved with a ghastly swiftness, its body seeming to glide over the ground, unhindered by the laws of the living. The red glow in its eyes intensified, casting a sinister light on its decaying face. The talisman began to glow its light, a stark contrast to the darkness that emanated from the Jiangxi. The creature hissed, a sound that was both a wail of anger and a cry of pain as the light from the talisman seared it like fire. The Jiangxi recoiled but did not retreat, its desire to consume life force overcoming its aversion to the light. Old Chen, seizing the moment, led the villagers in a final desperate chant. The combined forces created an invisible barrier, a shield of light and ancient magic that the Jiangxi could not penetrate. The creature let out a series of horrifying shrieks, its body contorting in agony as the light burned its flesh. Its movements became erratic, a dance of pain and rage before it finally turned and fled into the darkness, disappearing into the night from which it had come. The villagers stood in a stunned silence, the echoes of the Jiangxi scream still ringing in their ears. They had faced an unspeakable horror and had emerged victorious, but the night had left its mark on their souls. Li, holding the still glowing talisman, felt a mix of relief and sorrow, she looked down at Wei, his face pale but his eyes still brave. You saved us, Wei. You saved us all, she whispered. As the villagers slowly came to terms with what had happened, they resumed their celebrations, but the joy was now tempered with a sense of solemnity. Li, feeling a renewed sense of purpose and belonging, joined in the celebrations. She knew that her life would never be the same, she had faced the shadows of the past and found a light that would guide her in the days to come.